Merhaba, selam. How are you? We are so excited to be here as usual. Um, uh, my husband and I, we host this uh, together. We, our ministry is uh, health and fitness, meaning taking care of this physical body so we can do God's work better. We can serve him better on this earth. So, yes, uh, we... Will. Yes, we <laughs> Um, I do have always a main scripture for our show, and I always have a side scripture. And when I say that, Tony always goes, a side, a side scripture? scripture. What, what does that, that mean? A side scripture. A side say. scripture. I always find mm -hmm. another scripture that fits ah, gotcha. our uh, ministry. I hope. Is it a good one? I hope. You tell me what you think. Okay. Uh, main scripture is always we're going to go from here. 1 Corinthians 6, 19, 20. Or do you know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God? You are not your own, for you were bought with a price. So glorify God in your body. That's our main scripture. That's what we are trying to do. Uh, today I have a second scripture beloved I pray that all may go well with you and that you may be in good health as it goes well with your soul John 3 1 12 so your body is healthy is good and it can hold the spirit nicely it's a beautiful temple we will not quench the spirit and he will be able to guide us better and we will be able to do its work better 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 <laughs> i guess if you say it <laughs> better like, like all those times that really exactly means that's just something i'm trying to learn you know when you say it's good I said, is it really good? You said, no, oh, it's good, good. Oh, so it's really good. It's, it's really cultural. Yeah, we say yeah, it yeah, twice. Exactly. To, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Today, yeah. we are going to actually talk about what a healthy body means really. And we also are going to talk about exercise, what exercise means. What uh, And Tony has also got some messages that he needs to uh, talk about that. Um, so why don't you first go about uh, the message and what you need to show us, what you need to do? Okay. Well, you know, sometimes uh, what we've getting, we're getting a lot of feedback on our Instagram and on our Facebook. So we want to encourage you to continue to do that because we need that information. It's extremely important for us to connect with you. One of the things that's been really uh, sought after is how to do a correct push-up and what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a step further than that, and I'm going to actually not only show you exactly how to do it again, again, repetition is the best key to learning, but I'm going to show you how to put together a workout, what I call Tony's Insane Push-Ups, which actually is an incredible way to get strong if you can incorporate this in your life every day. Keep in mind, you cannot overtrain if you only use your body weight, okay, because it's natural and it's normal okay you got to just have to understand how important the body's mechanics are and how your body works in relation to whatever movement you're going to do or what it's called commonly as exercise okay so with that so i'm going to show you right yeah go ahead do i have your permission yes of course Maybe I do. go ahead okay have fun all right here we go then okay i can talk so <laughs> right now i'm going to do with Every man in the world should be doing, especially if he feels like he doesn't have the right attitude or whatever what he does. First, I'm going to get on my knees. <laughs> <laughs> now, what I want you to understand is that there's two types of push-ups, okay? There's two types, basically. There's a modification and there's a regular push-up. There's no such thing as a girl's push-up, okay? So for all you ladies... That when you look at your coaches or whatever you say, um, can we do a girl push up? There's no such thing, okay? It's a modification. Modification meaning if you cannot support your entire body weight, this is a way to get you there, okay? So, in this modification, what you wanna do, remember to get the, to get the proper position. 
you actually, I encourage everybody to lay down, okay, all the way, okay? When you're laying down all the way, what you have to understand is your arms aren't this way. Because if your arms are out this way, what's going to happen is as you push up, you're pushing this way. This is not correct, okay? When you're laying down, you want to get you a very good position. What that means is that if your arms are wider, you see my arms are at about a 90 degrees. If they're in, you know my elbows are going to come in as I push myself up this way, okay? If they're out, you notice how they go out. You see the position. It's very important that you understand the body's mechanics of how it works. Notice, my knees are here. So what I do is I lift my legs up, crossing my feet. So what happens is, instead of me being on the knee, I'm actually on this part. This part, not this part. Some people, when they're doing them, they're like this, okay? I have no idea what that means. <laughs> okay, however, what happens is, after you finish, your knee is sore and it hurts. Uh, so you want to remember the modification is here. See, if you're wide, you're at a 90 degrees. See how my elbows are out at a 90 degrees. Less stressful on the wrist. If you're in and you want a little bit more inner pec development, you're going to focus. You see how my arms change. See how they change the position. My elbows moving directly in proportion to where my body mechanically is built and conditioned. I'm not going to do this close in and my elbows be out there. As you can see, the stress on my wrist. It's going to hurt your wrist, okay? So, the regular is the same. The difference is, you're in this position, you're going to lift your knee, and then you're going to push up this way. Same concept, okay? You want to go down about the measure of a fist. That's the perfect push-up, the measure of a fist, okay? And then you push up this way, okay? Or you can lay down, and when you're in the same position, notice my knees are off the ground. You want your butt to come up first, like this, bop, straight. That's engaging your entire core. If you come up this way, that's wrong. You're using your lower back. See that? That's incorrect, okay? So we want to concentrate. We want to very, we want to focus ourselves basically on the body's mechanics, and we want to keep it exactly how your body was created. What this does is just like any relationship. What this will do for you is it will ignite and engage the muscles so that the muscles can actually conform to whatever you're doing. And as a result of that, what happens to you is that the muscles will begin to change and do it exactly what they were called to do, which is to utilize the fat, okay? And that's what we want to do. We want to trigger that response, okay? Weight loss is not about dieting. Dieting is another word for eating. The word diet, I say capital D, capital I, Capital E, <laughs> little bitty T. Now, if you get that in your mind, the first three letters in the word diet is what? Die. Yeah, we know what that is. See, it's a subliminal message, and we've made a lot of money off of that word. So I'm trying to tell you the truth, that if you do the right thing with your body, the key is to engage the muscle to utilize the fat. Now, the workout that I want to give you is actually you take the same push-up, and my, Tony's insane push-ups go like this. You start off, you count, one. You do one push-up, the next one is two. You do two push-ups. The next one you do three, you do three push-ups. You go all the way up to 10, and then you come all the way right back down, okay? That's a challenge. So those of you who did that, next week I want to hear from you, and I want to know about your experience, okay? Thank you so much, and back to you. <laughs> Well, um, I have a question. When you do push-ups, uh, it works uh, a lot of muscles. Uh, it works your abs if you do mm -hmm. it right. Mm -hmm. People think that you're doing push-ups only for your chest. Yeah. That is not true, yeah. correct? Right. Ch uh, the chest muscle, the chest muscle is your primary muscle. You have primary and secondary muscle involvement. Your chest, your pectoral muscle is your, this is your primary mover, okay? But your secondary muscles, like you've got this part, your anterior deltoid is involved. When you come down, your rear deltoid is involved. And then you have another primary mover, which is your tricep, which helps work with the chest to push you this way. Okay, so when you're pushing right, the chest should come out this way. Ooh. Yeah. Boom, boom. <laughs> okay. So 
it should come out this way. See, and ladies, I want you to understand something, okay? The reality of this and this is two different things, okay? If you do this, ladies, guess what? The women's breast is made up of approximately 20% fat. So what happens is, because of the weight here, your shoulders ball. When you do the push-up, you see here, just like you see my chest come, you also have that pectoral muscle here as well. Doing push-ups correctly puts this, gets this muscle in shape and condition, and what happens, two things. The fat in the breast actually be begins to get a little bit lower, and the, the breast begins to come up this way, okay? That's exactly what you want. It mimics a push-up bra in a sense, but you have to do a lot of push-ups, and some of you may have to do a lot of push-ups. But then on the other hand, you got to understand that stimulating the muscle correctly is what changes it. So the question I have for you, do you want to just be active or do you want to actually be active with results, basically? Yeah. Okay. So you work a lot more muscles than just your chest, you know, exactly. and then include your lower back and your abs and everything else involved, yeah. Great. Hmm. <laughs> I actually, someone asked me, uh, because I posted one of my fat pictures uh, on Facebook, mm -hmm. and that was like only 13 or 14 years ago. So I went through a lot of stuff. So they said, how did you do your arms like that? How did you do, what kind of weight did you use, your triceps and mm -hmm. everything? I said, you know what? Push-ups, 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 because I'm actually bench pressing my own weight and also, it's actually push-ups, as far as I know. It's harder than a bench press or lifting some dumbbells because you are laying on a, ta uh, on a chair, on a platform. So automatically, it deletes your ab muscles, your, a lot of muscles that has to keep you in balance. So when you do push-ups, actually, you work hard harder with your own body weight to keep yourself straight and push yourself. Mm -hmm. Automatically, when you do push-ups, you're actually doing cardio exactly. because the fact that uh, it's hard. Mm -hmm. Your heart rate will go up. Actually, push-ups will also give you the fret-burning effect and plus muscles, especially women. And then I'm going to get off the push-ups because I, we can talk about that forever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, especially women, yeah. we always always complain oh, oh, right, right here right here uh, it's just all or right here so we complain about that but we also say Karen I can't do any push-ups so that's the problem and we will not do it and it's too hard but we grow when life is hard when the exercise yeah. is hard yeah. we never learn Anything, this goes in our spiritual life or our physical life or family life, work life. When we are in a comfort zone, we will never learn or grow and get better. Mm -hmm. See, uh, my comfort zone is I do read the Bible, but I always tell Tony, I don't like to memorize it. I don't like to memorize it. <laughs> That's my comfort zone. So this way, I'm starting memorizing it. I'm starting learning it. It's going into my brain. So that's how I grow. So that's another thing. Muscles are the same way. When you stay in the same level with your exercise, you'll just stay there. Yeah. You're never going to grow, correct? Exactly. And, and your results are up and down and mostly down rather than up. And then all of a sudden, illness will take place. Exactly. And then after illness, then you lose, you lose a desire, and then after that, you just accept the fact of the way you are, not thinking that you can ever change. But right. I mean, hey, look at me. I'm 58 years old. Hey, you know, I'm in better shape now than when I was 18 years old. I wish I could go back. You know, sometimes when I go back to my own hometown, you know, and I see my old friends. Most mm -hmm. of my friends are dead anyway. Uh -oh. but, <laughs> I mean, that's sad. That. That is, uh -oh. No, they really are <laughs> sad, sad from where I come from. But, you know, when I'm with my sisters and everything, you know, they want to see their older brother. Right. You know, because uh, I thank God that God is, when I was young, at 14, they used to say, I'm the kid that runs all the time. But who would know that at the age of 14, now being 58 years old, that I'm now this way. 
you know, which is really cool. Because this is your mm -hmm. gift that mm -hmm. God has given you, and you are blessed that mm -hmm. you actually realize what your gift was, mm -hmm. and then you married me, of course, so you're double blessed. Okay. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was just a side. Just, I mean, you know, that was a side note. Good. <laughs> If I come next week and I'm skinnier than I look, you guys got to know this one. Yeah, she's starving. You know this is never, this show is never scripted. So nah. uh, we go what <laughs> God tells us uh, by. So uh, what I want to talk about actually, and I want also your input, is what a healthy, strong body means. So I'm going to ask you some questions. Now, we always think that, oh, you got to be skinny, you got to be, you know, you got to have, you know, if, if you're skinny, you're healthy and strong, and if you're fat, you're not healthy or whatever. So I have a question. I look at it totally differently, what a strong and a healthy body is. Let's say we have a disaster right now, God forbid, but the sirens went off and you have to leave. You have to leave your home in a second. Now, can you live? a few days without medication like you because you can't take your medicine and everything is closed and you cannot find medication so are you able to be healthy and not having any physical conditions uh, without a medication second of all a few days are you going to be able to stay hungry, meaning without finding food and not saying, oh my God, I have a low blood sugar or my, my uh, blood pressure went down. Oh my God, I don't feel good. Oh my God, I'm start shaking. Oh my God, I have a headache. So can you live healthy without food for a few days, without having side effects? Uh, can you run? Can you climb? Are you strong enough to run? Help other people pull things, run? Are you strong? You're healthy. You're physically healthy. And also, on top of that, are you able to handle this situation mentally? Yeah. Are you able to say, okay, okay, this is what's happening. Calm. God is with me. I'm healthy. I can deal with this and I will help other people. So if you say no to one or two or three of these things, it means your body is not strong and healthy like you think. Yeah. What do you think about that? What do you think about how I'm looking at this? Well, it, I mean, it, it makes a lot of sense, you know. Um, in the military, you know, um, I served my country in the military, and I remember basic training. And what was unique about basic training was that um, the first six weeks was very tough, uh, but you had to be prepared for anything. So they took you immediately out of your comfort zone, and they forced you in a survival kind of scenario. Right. And what happens is you're either going to keep it when you get out of basic training, or you're just going to go back to your old habits. Right. And then you tell the story like everybody. Boy, when I was in basic training, I was in great shape. Correct. But what happens is the military does that for a reason, which all the things and attributes that you just talked about, they do that for a reason to prepare you for disaster because to, to be prepared for disaster means that you have to be strong mentally and physically and spiritually. Believe it or not, yep. you know, they keep us spiritually connected in whatever faith we believe in to God because they realize and they know that God is truly the answer. Um, so, you know, the reality of how we live is basically what you said. If you can't do those things like Karen said, then you're in trouble. And if you're in trouble, be honest with yourself and let's change it. Let's change it together. Let's work on it because you, you can actually reverse anything that you're going on. Don't be, uh, don't be a, uh, what was I'm, I'm trying to say, uh, a patient all your life. Right. Uh, um, you know, yeah. yeah. Don't be a patient all your life. That's not normal. Uh, sickness is not normal. Sickness it is a response. A victim. Yeah. Don't be a, a victim. victim. Yeah. Because sickness is a sickness is a response to our irresponsibility in what God has gifted us with. That's where illness comes from. Illness is not a something that God is is wanting His people, the true believers, to actually be dealing with. Okay. So don't get that in your head that well I'm supposed to be sick. Really? Okay. So you got to really understand if you get into the scriptures, you find out that the men of God were strong. They were strong mentally, physically, and spiritually. When Jesus sent them out, he sent them out to do a work that they were prepared for. And that same conviction, I think that's what you're talking exactly. about. Exactly. 
and uh, I being call, ready. Yeah. I call it survival yeah. of the. I, I call it survival of the fittest. Yeah. So everything you do. Uh, meaning that could be exercise, that could be your sleep pattern, that could be your nutrition, that could be your spiritual life. Uh, it, it has to be preparing you for life. Mm -hmm. It's not about, oh, okay, I'm doing all this. Uh, I'm doing all this for so many pounds or so many kilos mm -hmm. uh, so that I fit in a bikini or a tank top or whatever, the wedding. No, whatever you do has to prepare you for life. It's the same thing. You read the Bible. Why? Yeah. Just to read it? Yeah. Just to know? Yeah. Or to apply yeah. and be an example to your surroundings. That's, what, what, that's how we're supposed to live. Mm -hmm. I'm not supposed to, you know, Tony always says, we're not supposed to like carry our Bible all the time to show that, oh my God, okay, we are Christians. We are supposed to, without even saying anything, portray our faith, our belief, and our respect and love for God with our lifestyle mm. in public and at home. Because there are people watching us. This could be spiritually, always, and also physically. Mm -hmm. I can be talking to you here. Hey, I have great knowledge. Tony has amazing knowledge. Uh, gift from God, great. But if we're not applying it to our own life first and living the way we're preaching, what's the point? That's hypocrisy, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So it's the same thing. We teach that the same thing to our kids. Uh, so that's why our physically what you're doing has to help your life. Mm -hmm. So it's not about a weight. It's, when I say it's not about a weight, of course, I always, I'm always late. I talk so much. I did bring again, of course, my fat and my muscle. Yeah. But I was going to talk more about this. I guess it's going to be the next show, but yeah. I still want to show you weight. Um, weight doesn't matter. Like, uh, the scale doesn't matter. What are you made of? Mm -hmm. This is strength, which is this is five pounds of muscle, and this is five pounds of fat. So it doesn't matter how much I weigh because I can be, let's say, we, let's talk kilos because I know kilos. Let's talk kilos. It can be, uh, I can be 60 kilos made of this, uh, and I, am, I look really small. I can be 60 kilos made of mostly this. I can be really looking pretty fat. So, and not strong enough and tired, and this will hold disease. This is open mm -hmm. for disease. This is hope open for strength. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, I guess I'm not going to be able to talk about this a lot. Not so, today. Unfortunately, hey, we don't have show, much time. Yeah. Uh, please, um, my, our dream is, actually, let's say my dream is, but my husband's dream is also, I would think, that to be able to do this, <laughs> to be able to do this show every day on this yeah. platform, exactly. because half an hour is not enough so I, you tell us though we want you to tell we us want, yeah, exactly yeah, we so want you to if tell we us can do it this every day yeah. we can make a series okay we'll yeah. talk about diabetes we'll talk about weight loss we'll talk about muscle we'll talk about sleep patterns and and it'll be so nice so that's our prayer um so that's it for me anything else you want to add well just want to let you guys know please be encouraged and remember you know this what i'm going to say to you because this is my prayer to god Lord, my heart is yours. It all belongs to you. I'll give you all the glory. Yes, I love you. I worship and adore you. I want to tell you more. Oh, Lord, how much I really do love you. And we love you guys. Thank you so much for being with us. And we look forward to seeing you next week. Bye. Bye-bye.